hello sincere friends hope you are all in good health so today i am back with an analysis of abiku by jp clark that is john pepper clark um just a disclaimer that this analysis is my personal take and any errors i make are mine so earlier i made an analysis of um, another poem by the same name abiku by wally Shoinka. if you are interested in that I will put um, a link in the description box and you can go watch that. So Abiku is um, simply a spirit child and is a belief by the Yoruba people of Nigeria. Um, the style of this poem by J.P. Clark is um, one stanza, a full stanza of 26 lines, um, no, no um, breaks in the stanza. Um, this poem was written in 1965. So as I said, Abiku is a spirit child and the belief, the cultural belief is a child is born and then dies in um, infancy or early childhood and then this cycle keeps repeating and the spirit of Abiku is reincarnated when that child is reborn after dying. Um, so the tone of this poem is um, an appealing tone and it's told from the viewpoint of um, either the family members, I would say, or the relatives of the spirit child, that's Abiku, and the mother. Um, let me go ahead and get into the review itself. The poem goes like this. Coming and going these several seasons, do stay out on the baobab tree. Follow where you please your kindred spirits, if indoors is not enough for you. So this... Um, first part of the poem just refers to the passing of time when abiku comes and goes when abiku is is born and dies the cycle repeating and there's a belief in old i'm not sure if it's african culture or nigerian culture in particular but in nigeria um there is this tree called a baobab tree and um it's believed that spirits reside in some of these trees so you would hear maybe older people telling younger kids not to stay under trees, especially um, towards dusk, evening time or night, because spirits dwell in these trees. So um, the narrator of this poem is just telling the spirit of Abiku when he dies. Um, you can just stay out with your kinder spirits, your brethren, instead of coming and going, passing from the mortal world to the spiritual world. So pick a side and stay if indoors the mortal world is not enough for you the poem continues true it leaks through the touch when floods brim the banks and the bats and the owls often tear in at night through the eaves um this the description of the home or will i say the the hut it's this is a rural setting so we have some of those huts in like the villages that are built with um bamboo thatch mud um and of course when it rains some of those um, houses have leakages through the roof so it's just explaining the situation of the house so this will be a humble home um a home that is family oriented a home that would um, work hard to provide for their families probably by um, agrarian means farming fishing a reference is even make, made to fish later on in the poem as we continue so very humble beginnings so the narrator is trying to um, imply that Abiku may not be satisfied with the status quo of the family and that may be one of the reasons why he keeps um, coming and going um, to pick off Anat Hamatan, the bamboo walls are ready tinder for the fire that dries the fresh fish up on the rack. Um, back in Nigeria, we have three seasons, basically. It's like the raining season where the rains really fall heavily, the dry season where it's all um, dry, no rain, hot and humid. And then we also have the Hamatan. The closest thing that would explain Hamatan is it would be um, like winter or well closer to fall weather. So it's dry, it's dusty, it's windy. Um, in the morning, there may be some dew on the grass before the sun comes up and burns the dew away. But just uh, an explanation of what the Hamatan weather is usually like. 
So of course, when things are really dry, um, that bamboo is really tender. It kindles. People use it to um, make fires, you know, to cook, boil water. And in this case, um, there's also preparations for fish. Um, fish is used in a lot of the cuisines and um, fish in different stages, fresh fish, fried fish, dried fish, just to add flavor to the types of um, foods that are indigenous to those type of areas. So um, the bamboo walls are dry enough that um, JP Clark can compare them to tinder that is ready for the fire to dry up the fish, the fresh fish for um, the food. Keep in mind also like when drying up this fish, this is also a way to preserve the fish. With the absence of um, steady electricity, the best way to dry your fish and keep it, preserve it for like a longer period of time would be drying up the fish. So this is just painting the picture of what the home life would be for Abiku, the type of family um, that child is being born into. So despite this background of explanation, this kind of sets the stage for the next part of the poem. Still, it's been the healthy stock to several fingers to many more will be who reach to the sun. So this is a pretty interesting comparison because despite these humble beginnings, many have um, been born into this household and they've made something of themselves. Their humble beginnings did not stop them from re reaching the sun. So um, the family members are appealing to Abiku. Despite the humble um, origins of the home, that would not stop Abiku from staying and, um, will I say, reaping the benefits of being a member of that family. So it's making a comparison um, with people who, who've been in the home and also who've made something of themselves. No longer then bestride the threshold, but step in and stay for good. Still, um, imploring the child to be born and stay longer this time or stay permanently stay through the lifespan instead of um, being born and then dying in infancy or early childhood we know the knife scars serrating down your back and front like beak of the swordfish and both your ears notched as a bondsman to this house are all relics of your first comings so this may sound a bit barbaric, but um, those that believe in those, um, that type of culture, when they, they, they believe they have a, an Abiku child on their hands, they usually mark the child. So when he is reborn, when he dies and is reborn, they can identify him either by the scars on his face, on his back. Um, that's the, um, the reference to the serration here knife scars serrating down the back and front like the beak of the swordfish and also the notching of the ears that is um, something that I think is synonymous to um, some of the bondsmen like slaves um, when they notch the ears um, anybody who sees someone with a, with a notch ears in those days would know this is not a free person this is a slave belongs to a master a household so in the same vein some of those um, families would notch the ears of Abiku, so they believe when he reincarnates as a newborn baby, he will still bear the same scars and he will be identified easily that way. The last um, part of the poem says, Then step in, step in and stay, for her body is tired, tired, her milk going sour, where many more mouths gladden the heart. So this um, refers to the mother who just imagine a woman having going through pregnancy, having a baby, then the baby dying, not having a baby to suckle the milk. Of course, uh, the pain of having um, swollen mammary glands, swollen breasts, and then the child dies, is buried, and then he has to come. He, he is born again or the child is born again. And this cycle repeats. So after a while, of course, the body is tired. Pregnancy takes a toll on the body. Her milk is going sour. Um, just like milk that we buy from the store too, you know, if not stored properly or if just stale and it's not used, of course, it gets sour. It, um, the milk has an expiration date. So that is a reference here. Her body is tired. Her milk going sour. So um, Abiku should, you know, take pity on the mother if not for anything, you know, the cycle of being born and dying is through a person. 
So she has to go through this rigors of pregnancy and childbirth. And then at the end of the day, the child still dies. But of course, many more than mouths have suckled at that same breast. And they are still here making something of themselves, gladdening the home, you know, contributing to the family. And, you know, Abiku can choose to be one of these. Um, so this is my take on Abiku by John Pepe Clark. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Um, if you have any comments, please um, leave those comments in the comment section below. Thank you very much for listening. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you.